Hello, hello everyone. How are you all doing? So we're live here on Facebook and I thought I would, uh, we're moving into spring. Now what I, if you have a question, you can pop it in the comments here, but I'm just gonna kind of keep going and keep rolling. And if I sit, when I get to the end, I'll take questions then. So I'm Joanne Faulkner. Many of you already know me. I'm a specialist in traditional Chinese medicine. I work with shiatsu, which is acupuncture without needles. And I've written a couple of books, Good Food, Better Sex, and Shiatsu and the Art of Conscious Cooking. So these use all three elements of Chinese medicine, food energetics, acupressure points, and Qigong energy exercises. So I thought I'd really um, come on this afternoon and just share some of my knowledge with you about kind of lifting depression and feeling frustrated. You know, I, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of a bit bored of lockdown now. You know, I have enjoyed that internal time and I've painted a lot of walls and my garden looks lovely. But the frustration that happens sometimes with lockdown and especially I live with um, uh, two 18 year olds and a 15 year old and that can be really testing and really trying and uh, so I thought I would share some of what I do to manage the depression that can kind of set in when you feel like oh, what is the point it's just the same and also some of the frustration and anger that can happen when you're living together and you feel powerless because that's really the uh, motivation for the anger and the frustration is to gain energy to kind of push boundaries back and feel your power. But if you keep doing that, it's really not great for the body and will eventually exhaust you. So which in Chinese medicine, what am I talking about? So in Chinese medicine, the organ of the liver, which sits underneath your rib cage on your right hand side, is really to do with the emotion of frustration and anger. In Chinese medicine, each of the organs has a specific flavor, time of day, um, an emotion, uh, obviously a meridian pathway, all of this kind of fit into the five element sequence. And we have just moved through the equinox into spring. And that also is the liver. That is to do with the liver. So for example, last month I was talking a lot to do about spleen. And that is the time of late summer. It has a flavor of sweet and the emotion is satisfaction and comfort. But now as we move into spring, that is the liver. It is the emotion of creativity and flexibility, but in its negative, it's about frustration and anger. And when you feel like you don't have a voice, that's when the depression comes in because the energy, it's believed in Chinese medicine, turns inwards and really begins to flatten in the body. So you are kind of lackluster and you just can't be bothered. And that is anger turned inwards. But that's okay, we can do things with that. The great thing about Chinese medicine is that there is a belief that everything changes. Energy changes, nothing stays the same. And the thing with liver is it's the only organ in the body that can regrow. You know, if you damage your spleen, mm -hmm, you've damaged your spleen. If you damage your liver, it can actually repair and heal itself. Isn't that amazing? And that's why it's also connected with spring. It has the color green. Each of these has the color. So you might, if you follow me, you know that last month I was talking spleen and that has the color orange. We eat a lot of orange sweet foods. The liver likes green and it actually likes raw foods. That green, the chlorophyll in foods actually stimulates the gallbladder and the liver into producing bile and breaking down fats. So there is a crossover between Chinese medicine and Western medicine. It's not just kind of coming out of the air. A lot of these, even though Chinese medicine has been around for thousands of years, there's a lot of correlation with what we understand now. So what can we do? So we can eat the foods that are good for the liver. So we can eat green foods. These would be kind of like sour, 
uh, sour is the flavor. So lemons, limes, pickles. So get up in the morning, have a hot water and a lemon. Um, you can also then have all your kind of raw green smoothies. But just to say, we're not quite into the summer yet. So don't be having them too early in the morning. Have your green smoothies later in the day when the body has already warmed up. Because if you eat too much raw food too early in the day, you weaken the spleen and the stomach and the digestion. You can end up with loose stools and bloating. So there's always a balance. There's always yin and there's always yang. So raw food, brilliant, but later on in the day. So having your green smoothies later in the day. What other green foods are great for the liver? Well, kale, spinach, broccoli, all of those things that we naturally put in green smoothies. Avocados, fantastic, because they've got full of oil. So these are the foods that can support the liver as you're feeling kind of depressed and going through a funky time. It's also to say, if you are on depression medication or, or medication at all, don't think that just by replacing your medication for a green smoothie, that's the way to do it. I'm saying what I'm about in Chinese medicine is about supporting the body and supporting you on your journey. So don't just throw away the medication. It's important that you make changes slowly with a healthcare professional because there are no two people the same and there are no two solutions the same. So Unfortunately, to talk a bit about medication though, medication on the liver, it means that the liver has to work doubly hard because the liver is the detoxification organ. So if you're already feeling a little bit down, you know, taking something kind of like alcohol or other kind of stimulants that actually further weaken the liver is not gonna help your mood in the long term. So what can help your mood in the long term? Okay, so I'm going to show you a very simple Qigong tapping exercise that really helps to balance your hormones. So if you're like me, I'm 52 and kind of around menopause age, definitely gone through perimenopause. It's really important to keep the liver healthy because that's what manages your hormones. So if you've got a real hormonal imbalance and you're finding lots of flushes, you can't sleep, this one is really good for helping the liver detoxify those excess hormones and keeping your body running smoothly. So it's really simple. We have three energy centers in the body. We have the lower dantian, which is below the belly button. I know you can't see it now, but it's, I'm pointing below my belly button. We have the middle, the middle dantian, and we have the upper dantian. Okay, so we, what we want to do is begin by tapping, making loose fists. Let me see if I can do this. Okay, so make loose fists and I want you to just tap on your sacrum. Can you see where I'm tapping? I'm tapping on my sacrum, that triangular bone at the base of your spine. So I'm just tapping on that triangular bone on the base of my spine. I'm just stimulating and saying hello to my lower dantian. I see you, Geraldine. I see you, I see your comment. If anybody has any comments on or questions, pop them in the chat. So I'm just tapping on my sacrum and tapping on my kidneys. Little bit of a tap, this is your lower dantian. And now I move to my middle dantian. So I'm tapping on my sternum here. I'm going up to my collarbone, just below my collarbone, I'm tapping here. This is the end of the kidney meridian, so it really helps with that kind of adrenal cortisol. Again, balancing hormones. Coming down to the sternum, tapping here. And now I want you to find your by way point. Put your thumbs on top of your ears, and right on top of your head is your by way point and you can tap into there. So if you're feeling really unbalanced, maybe, I don't know, I live in a house of teenagers, maybe they're driving you crazy, maybe you, the repetition of constantly having to clear up cereal is getting you down. 
I'm just talking from life experience here. And so it's really good to be in the body. And this is really managing those hormones. So tapping on the head, coming back to the sternum. So also um, this anything that represses uh, and squashes the liver energy could give you kind of extreme fatigue as well. So adrenal fatigue, this is a really good way of starting to work with adrenal fatigue. And tapping again on the sacrum. I mean, there is no magic button, but there's definitely a first step to take on a journey of a thousand miles. You have to start somewhere. So just start with this tapping, tapping on the sacrum, tapping on the sternum, and tapping on the byway point. Rubbing your hands. And we'll do another Qigong exercise, which is 10 horses run through forest. And you're thinking, how can that be a Qigong exercise? That just feels good. Qigong, and especially my Qi flow with Joe, feels good. So sweep it down, sweep it down over the chest and come down to your belly. There's my belly button. I'm coming down to my belly. Do that again. And down, holding the hands over the top of each other. You can hold your left over right or right over left. I'm not going to get into the technicalities of why we do that here on Facebook Live. So just we did the tapping and now we come down and we bring everything to rest here. So this is a good one to begin with. If you're suffering from adrenal fatigue or you're just feeling really, really frazzled, this is a good place to start. And then you can begin to work in other ways. So you can see what I'm doing here. The liver energy likes to twist and curl. Do you remember I said it was about flexibility and flow? And can you see when things grow in nature, they never grow in a straight line. Really, you tend to find that they weave and wind their way around. And that is liver energy. So next month in Chi Flow with Joe, we're going to be doing a lot of spiraling movements. There's a great one called Spiral Palm, where you follow the palm and you open up the neck and you open up the shoulders because there's a lot of gallbladder and meridian channels that go up through the shoulders, gallbladder especially, and all around the head. And this can, when these get stuck and you get kind of frustrated, I'm really angry. Can you see what happens? Everything gets stuck and the chi doesn't flow. And that's when you get kind of headaches, migraines, you feel like you just want to go to bed. You don't want to get up again. So what we do is we clear the clear the neck and the shoulders. We make sure in the Qigong flow that your neck is always nice and open so that the chi can flow and it doesn't get blocked. So what can I show you for this? Okay, so I've got a great one for this one. It's more of an emotional release as well, because when the liver gets stuck, we can sometimes feel like we have literally something stuck in our throat. It's a condition called plum pit throat. And it feels almost kind of like you, you can't get something out. Also, when you get goiters or when you get swelling around the top of the chest, that would tell me that your liver energy needs to be expressed. So we're gonna do lion's breath, okay? And this one's really good because it kind of makes you feel silly. And it's really good to feel silly and not feel like everything is too important. So I want you to squeeze the energy in. And so we draw the energy through that byway point, which I showed you at the top of the head. We draw that in through the sacrum, the sternum and the top of the head. So breathe it in and draw it all in and make a prune face. And then anybody just joining now on Facebook Live, you might want what we're doing, but we're actually clearing the liver channel. So if you keep on feeling like you need to shout at people to get hurt, it's exhausting. It's okay to clear everything out once in a while and have a and be um angry every so often but if you're angry all the time there's something going on with you internally that needs to be worked out and like I said if you can't express that 
that turns inwards and becomes depression. So let's look at opening the neck and the what's nice and interesting is the muscle of the tongue relates to the heart. In Chinese medicine, there's a belief that your heart muscle can't your heart muscle comes up and out through your tongue. So what you're doing here is you're really moving the muscles of your tongue. All right. So breathing in, gather it all in. <sighs> And again, one more time, one more time. So that really helps. So we've got a few different things. I've covered some of the foods, eating green foods, do some of the tapping to work on the adrenals actually do the physicalities. The other thing we're doing in Chi Flow with Joe is we're doing the healing sound. So every time we throw away the trash, there's an exercise called throwing away the trash. We throw away what we don't need. You use the healing sound. So you could use that with the healing sound. The healing sound for the liver is shh, shh. So we make that sound shh and throw away any frustration and anger we don't want. and then draw in lots of flexibility and green, and we smile at the liver. Smiling at the organs, smiling at the organs. So we have cleared everything out, and now we replenish the organs with flexibility and creativity. The other thing that can happen with, um, with the liver is you can become really kind of confused and foggy headed and you don't know which way to go. The gallbladder goes down either side of the body and you can kind of go, I don't know what to do, you know, and that can lead to more kind of frustration. I don't know what to do. I don't know whether to do this or do that. And so you end up doing nothing and you feel kind of crapper, you know, you're just not flowing. So how to be in your flow. So. This is, I think, the last one I'm going to show you. Uh, again, it's a wonderful Qigong move. And it's the warm-up for the spiral palms. Do you remember I said next month uh, we're going to be doing in the Qi Flow with Joe a lot of spiral movements? And this one is the warm-up. So instead of me showing you the complex one, I'm going to show you the simple one first. And it's called Kuan Yin Draws the Rainbow. How beautiful is that? So I want you to feel all that beautiful rainbow as you do this move, okay? So you need to make sure, I can't stand up because we're on Facebook Live, but normally my chief flow with Joe, we're standing up, we're on Zoom, and what I'm gonna do is, what you do is I'll move back a little bit, and you start with your hands out. Mm, which way will I move? I'll move that way. Start with your hands out, breathing in, Follow your hand. You're probably going to have to watch me first. Follow your hand as it goes round, and then it sweeps, scooping up the chi and down. Okay, very simple. Breathing in, following the arm with your eyes, scooping up and down. Now the breath work is a little bit important because what we're doing is we're really wringing out the liver and the spleen. So a lot of the exercises we're going to do next month in Chi Flow with Joe are about kind of twisting and turning. Do you remember I said like things grow in nature in curls and swirls? If you think of fractals, everything is in spirals. So we're going to be doing a lot of twists and turns. And what that does is it really wrings out the liver and the spleen and gets them kind of moving so that the energy moves and the chi moves and your depression and your feeling in a funk also kind of shifts. So let's do that one together. So as we open up, we breathe in and then you can see that as the arm comes down, we're kind of squashing the liver a little bit and we breathe out. So almost kind of releasing all those kind of toxins or stale energy out of the liver. And then we breathe in as we scoop it up and down to the center, all right? You wanna try that one together, so we'll go to the other side. So breathing in, 
opening up. Kuan Yin draws rainbow. Follow it with your eyes and breathing out, squashing through into the organ. Breathing in and out. Breathing in. and out breathing in and out now try not to watch the screen and do it with your own body following it with your eyes breathing in and out breathing in up we come and up and down one last time breathing in opening up opening up through the armpit opening the liver squashing it down and down last time to the opposite side this is the spleen responsible for insulin and balancing blood sugars and those two very much in balance. And as we always do, breathing in, drawing the energy down through the byway point at the top of the head and almost kind of pushing the energy down over the center of the chest, over the belly to the lower dantian. This is where you want your energy always, always to come down through the head, over the heart to the lower dantian. Okay, so when you've done any kind of practice, always come down to the lower Dantian. And this is where we live from. This is our area of vitality. It contains all our organs, our sexual energy. This is our area of vitality. So this is the best place in which to store your energy. Not in your heart, because that can get too agitated. Not in your head, because that can get too full and clogged. Leave it open so that the wisdom of the universe can come in. So anyway, getting too, too esoteric into my uh, Chinese medicine. But hopefully I've given you some tips there. Please do put in the comments. Let me have a look at the comments now. <laughs> Your dog is having a freak attack at the breathing. <laughs> okay, so well actually, animals can really pick up on the energy. So if it is getting freaked, just bring the energy down over the chest to the lower dantian. So hopefully you've got some tips there. So you've got some acupressure points which are around the sacrum. There's loads of them. I don't need to go into them specifically. Just tapping on the sacrum, tapping on the sternum, tapping on the top of the head. There's some points. And then what else? The foods, the green foods really help to clear the liver. So uh, if your liver is stagnant, you can find that your body fluctuates in temperature too much. Uh, you need to be clearing the liver, having plenty of sour foods, having plenty of green foods. Uh, and then also the qigong moves, the qigongs that, that squeeze and turn. So the qi, the, the kuan yin draws the rainbow and the lion's breath, getting that chi to flow. So let's see if I can answer any questions for anybody. Fiona, this is an easy place to start. You're very welcome, nice and silly. Yes, you like the lion's breath. It's very, you know, when our energy goes flat, it, it can be difficult to feel like we wanna be silly, like we wanna have fun at all. So just take that first step of squeezing your body up like a prune and then <sighs> letting it go. And you'd be surprised sometimes how much the, the, the tongue actually doesn't wanna come out. Sometimes I get people to do it and it's like that. Really kind of go with the tongue. Be aware that the tongue is linked to the heart. So how we talk and what we say and what we do with our tongue can really impact the heart. Now, let me see. I hope your dog is okay now, Sharon. Hey, Pamela, how you doing? Hey, Julia, good stuff. Feeling lighter in my head already. Good, good, good. Those three tapping points. I mean, I know in the chi flow with Joe, we go more into exactly where the points are, but those three points on, this, on the sacrum, the sternum, and the, the top of the head, 
will really help to balance your hormones, balance your adrenals, and just, you know, people talk about post-traumatic stress disorder. It's not a disorder, it's just a response to stress. And so what's really good is if we can use the tapping, it slightly stresses the body, but then it knows that it's going to come back to balance. That's the thing, is we can't avoid stress. You know, we can't walk around in meditation and mindfulness all day. Well, you can, and some people do, but the way I manage it is that I just know that I've got my chi flow practice and my tapping and my points, and that brings me back to me taking care of myself. Now, Susan, you loved that. Good, I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did. Um, what I'm gonna do, Gwen, Sorrel is around at the moment. Yeah, beautiful herb, really beautiful herb. And also don't forget the wild garlic is gonna be upon us. And lots of people make wild garlic pesto and that's fantastic. Pesto is fantastic because it's the greens. You're not cooking it, so it stays raw. And generally you put it maybe on cooked food so you're getting a good balance of cooked and raw. And that's what the body likes, balance. Don't go overboard and become a green goddess and only have green smoothies. Your stomach and spleen will not thank you for that. You need to have a good balance of some raw and some green. So making, putting sorrel in your pestos, making that garlic pesto. Also garlic, fantastic for the immune system because it has a pungent flavor, which in Chinese medicine is all about the immune system. And so you can see here, liver, what have I made with this pesto? So this pesto I make, I also kind of then put anchovies because the, the uh, liver really likes oils, so oily fish. But most of the recipes in here are actually vegetarian. There's only about three or four that are actually kind of fish. And I think there's a bone broth, but the rest of it in Chinese medicine, it's kind of mainly plant-based. So lots and lots of green food recipes in there, all about clearing the liver and moving depression. Helen, I'm glad you liked it. Eileen, you're very welcome, Eileen. Love the prune. It's nice to do with the kids. Good luck. Let me know how that goes because uh, in the Chi Flow with Joe group, which is my group, we have Chi Flow every morning at 8.30. There's about 250 of us I'd say there's about 80 or 90 people live every morning and then I send out the recordings and you can do your practice uh, whenever you like uh, she was saying that she works with kids and she was getting them to do the prune face and they wouldn't do it it was only her that would do it so the kids felt too self-conscious so it is about that express yourself so great to get the kids to go it food Tapping Qigong, great combination. It is, isn't it? Jie, yeah, is the point between the eyebrows on the skull bone or under it? It's actually on the skull bone. So Jie, yeah, I know that you're from my Qi Flow group. So you're asking me about uh, the yin tang point. So when we press the by way point, at the same time you can press yin tang. So can you see where I'm pressing? I'm pressing kind of in between the eyebrows but I'm not on the bridge of the nose, I'm kind of on the bone, okay? Now, what you do when you press on this is you imagine that you have the chi flowing through the top of the head and also through the front, this kind of third eyebrow point, third eyebrow, third eye point, not a third eyebrow, unless you've got a monobrow and that's just one eyebrow. And you imagine the chi flowing through and where they intersect in the middle is right in the center of the brain. And that's like a crystal palace. And you imagine that all the center of the brain begins to fill with crystal light. So that's the yin tang point. And doing these together is also very good at releasing emotional trauma and um, brain fog. So I hope that answers you, Jer. Fiona, really helpful. Oh, Sharon, she's grand, but I'm going to have to leave her with a mum in future. She's all over me. Oh, the dog. The, the joys of having the dog. So hopefully I gave you a sense of what depression is in Chinese medicine. It's the need to express yourself 
And often when that, when you feel like you can't express yourself, you use extra force, which is kind of anger to really put your point across and get heard. And if you still don't get heard, that energy turns inward. And then once it turns inwards, that's what actually puts you in a funk and actually kind of makes you feel depressed. Like you say, what is the point? So all of that is around the liver. And it's really easy with Chinese medicine then. You just look for, dun, 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 dun. let me see if I can show you. There's the five, it's just the five elements. So if you know, it's really just about understanding the body and understanding your emotions and all the emotions linked to certain organs. So for example, if you're craving a lot of things, that means your spleen is out of balance because that craving and grasping is the emotion of the spleen. It's, and it fits in so easily. And I, I love it. It's my life. I, this is my path and I love to share it. So I hope that uh, you have maybe got something to take away with you there and some kind of understanding of your own body and what it says to you at different times. If you'd like to join me at Chi Flow with Joe, what I will do is I will put the link underneath the recording. And please do share this recording with your friends. Feel free to share it all over Facebook. All right. May you be happy and may you be well. May I be happy, may I be well. And may all beings everywhere be happy, safe and well. Have a great day full of Chi. And I will be hopping on Facebook Live. So do like and follow. Take it easy. Bye bye.